In order for astronomers to be able to observe anything, they need to understand how light works, considering that light is the only thing that they can actually observe. When light encounters a substance, it is either reflected, refracted, or absorbed. Here we can see light reflecting off of the surface of water at Vitruvian Park in Addison, Texas, giving us the mirror images of the beautifully lit trees and the building in the background. Next we see an example of sunlight refracting through a crystal pendant. But how is it that white light, sunlight, can give us so many beautiful colors when it interacts with things like glass or crystalline prisms? By refracting. Not only does light bend when it passes through a glass prism, different wavelengths bend at different angles, resulting in the split that gives us the rainbow. In reality, the colors of objects that we see are actually determined by the color that's reflected off of the surface of that object. In the case of a blue surface, all the colors except blue are absorbed, leaving only blue to bounce off the surface and enter your eyes. The same can be said for a green surface, which absorbs everything but green, so we see green. When you look at a room like this, full of various colorful things, remember that you're seeing the only color of light that wasn't absorbed by the object. So technically, the blue wall has absorbed every possible color but blue, and that's why we see the vibrant color reflecting back to us. The same can be said about the green and the turquoise cushions and the coral accent piece on the blue wall itself. But what about objects that are white or black? In the cases of objects that appear white, sunlight comes in as white light and is completely reflected off the object, causing it to appear white since our eyes have collected all the component colors of light. Objects that appear black appear black because they absorb every possible color of light. So what we actually see is the absence of light in these cases. But there's black and then there's Vanta black. Developed by Surrey Nanosystems in the UK, this is one of the darkest substances known, absorbing up to 99.965% of light. It is so absorbent of not just visible light, but all types of light, that none of the physical features can be discerned unless you view the object's silhouette. Now, one of the most prominent and common examples of refraction in our everyday lives is the rainbow. The water particles in the atmosphere, especially after a storm or during a break in one, all act as individual tiny glass prisms, refracting the incoming sunlight to form these wondrous beauties. But one of the most peculiar types of rainbow is the monochrome rainbow, which can be seen here in this eerie unenhanced photo from July of 1980, taken in the suburbs of Minneapolis. Monochrome rainbows are usually red because red light is the least refracted of the color components of white light, whereas the shorter wavelengths like blue and purple are scattered completely. These events happen when the sun is low on the horizon, so you're bound to see these red rainbows, if you're lucky, during sunrise and sunset. In the event of a double rainbow like the one seen here in the Garden of the Gods at Colorado Springs, Colorado, the order of the colors is reversed in the secondary rainbow, with red on the inside and violet on the outside in comparison to the primary bow. And the area in between the two is significantly darker, this is called Alexander's Band, or Alexander's Dark Band, named after Alexander of Aphrodisias, who observed and recorded it in the 3rd century AD. The reason it appears so dark is because the various colors of light that are being refracted by the water molecules in the band are not being redirected to our eyes, so we just see it a bit dimmer than either of the two bows.